The Large Hadron Collider is the most powerful accelerator ever built. It is a 27 km underground beam where we collide beams of protons by accelerating them up to the highest achievable energy where the limit only comes from technology. Hi, I am Fabiola Gianotti. I am a particle physicist and I work at CERN, the European Laboratory for Particle Physics. Since I was a little child, I've always been attracted by the fundamental questions. Understanding how things work at the most fundamental levels. I would spend hours and looking at the sky and understanding how the cosmos works. Today, we know about 5% of the universe. The rest, 95%, is a question mark. It fascinates me so much to explore what we call the energy frontier. We know that the standard model of particle physics, although very successful, is not a complete theory. There must be new physics, and this new physics may manifest itself through the production of new heavy particles, new phenomena, and for this we need energy. We have a discovery. We have observed a new particle consistent with a Higgs boson. The discovery of the Higgs boson for me was really a big emotion. We announced the discovery of the Higgs boson on the 4th of July 2012, when we unblinded the signal region and we found an excess of events at the same place where we had found also an excess the previous year. I understood we had something big in our data. The discovery of the Higgs boson is really a monumental one. It's very important also for our own existence because the Higgs boson is related to the mechanism that allowed matter to form in the early universe, and this is the matter we are all made of. Without the Brautangler Higgs mechanism, we will simply not be here because atoms will not have formed in the early universe. It is the simplest and the most perplexing object we ever discovered in fundamental physics. ATLAS and CMS are the so-called general purpose experiments at the Large Hadron Collider. They were designed and built with different and complementary technologies to be able to explore all the open questions. These are very flexible experiments. When they were designed in the early 90s, some of the theories that today are quite fashionable had not been developed yet. Yet, these experiments today are very good in coping with the manifestations foreseen by these new theories. There is a healthy competition between the two experiments, a competition that pushes the two experiments to produce results in a rigorous way, but also as quickly as fast as possible, and very often also those results are combined. The ALICE experiment has been designed to study the quark gluon plasma. This is a state of matter that characterized the early universe a few microseconds after the Big Bang. The quark gluon plasma can be recreated by colliding heavy ions, such as lead ions, and creating a state of very high density of matter and very high temperature, and this allows quark and gluons to become free particles and so to create this quark-gluon plasma of free quarks and gluons. There are some hypotheses that the quark-gluon plasma may be found in the core of massive neutron stars, but we don't really know. It's a very interesting state of matter and a very extreme condition that have characterized the early universe. LHCb studies in particular particles containing the B quark to detect any difference between the two classes of particles which would help us explain the so-called matter-antimatter asymmetry in the universe. We think that at the time of the Big Bang, matter and antimatter were present in similar proportion, but then something happened and nature preferred matter over antimatter. Today there is very little antimatter in the universe, so it's important to study the behavior of matter and antimatter in all details to 
try and see if there are differences between the two that could explain this asymmetry, this imbalance. And now we do observe differences in the behavior of particles and antiparticles, in particular now with the LHCB experiment, but this difference is tiny and is not enough to understand the imbalance in the universe. So we have to continue to explore this phenomenon to provide answer to this question. The LHCB experiment have been able to discover a plethora, more than 70 new composite particles. These are not elementary particles, they are made of many quarks. They are called exotic hadrons. These are particles with strong interaction composed of tetraquarks, pentaquarks, and they're very interesting because they allow us to understand how quantum chromodynamics works and they contribute to pushing the limits of knowledge. The Large Hadron Collider is not only a fantastic scientific adventure, it's also a superb human adventure because it brings together 13,000 people working together, pushed by a common goal, by common purpose. This endeavor cannot be carried out by just an individual, not even a single country or a single continent. It really requires the collaboration of people from all over the world, so many different brains and technologies and efforts. So it's really a great human endeavor. The next step is the upgrade of the Large Hadron Collider to operate uh, with more intense beams of protons. The LHC is a 27-kilometer ring. The future circular collider is a bigger ring, which will allow us to make a great step forward in the understanding of the Higgs boson and then in exploring the next energy frontier. Discoveries are uh, emotional moments. They are the result of the humanity's wish to explore. We have some objectives that are mind-blowing. They look difficult to accomplish, but we are very stubborn people. The big thing about the discovery is that it closes some doors, but also it opens new questions. For me, science has mainly to do with answering the question, are we asking ourselves the right question?